In our last segment, we focused on the big band. It talked about how in the mid-1930s, the big band kind of rose to prominence as the most dominant kind of pop music sound in the country. And of course, drummers at that time were just starting to bring in the hi-hat. This was a new instrument for the 1930s and a new sound, a new way of playing the drum set. And we can't really talk about the big band era unless we talk about Gene Krupa. And maybe some of you out there have heard of Gene Krupa, but he's probably one of the most important names in drumming, period, that we could talk about out of anybody. Because without Gene Krupa, we really wouldn't have the drum stars of today that we do, and we may not have the drum soloing today that we normally have come, come to expect. And Gene Krupa really was the first uh, true star of the drums. There had been drummers before him that had been well-known or that were maybe had done some, some flashy kind of solo -y stuff, but Gene Krupa really was the guy that took the drummer from being the timekeeper in the back of the band and brought him forward so that he was as much a part of the band, or she I should say, as much a part of the band as anybody else, as every other instrument. Krupa was a, he was a wild, flashy player, a lot of energy, his hair flying, you know, and he was very exciting to watch. But Krupa was important not just because he was a well-known drummer and helped out the role of the drummer. He was important for many different reasons. And prior to this time, if we go back to the early drum sets, the tom-toms they had really were still almost like ethnic Chinese instruments, which really was where the tom-tom comes from. And the heads were tacked on, the drums tended to be small, um, and you couldn't really tune it like you could tune a snare drum. One of the things that Krupa did when it comes to the drum set was that he went to his company that he endorsed, the Slingerland Drum Company, and he said, you know, now that I'm doing this stuff in the big bands and I'm, we're able to play out more and play a little louder as drummers, um, I want to be able to, to take the tom-toms that we had have and, and be able to tune them separately. So the, the idea of a dual tension tom-tom was really brought out by Gene Krupa. And once he started to use it with his big mega hit, Sing Sing Sing, of course, every other band followed suit. And pretty soon, every big band had to have a star drummer. So it's at this time period where guys like Chick Webb emerged, and he actually came a little bit before Gene Krupa, was an influence on Krupa. Uh, of course, Buddy Rich emerges playing with first the Harry James Band, then the Tommy Dorsey Orchestra. Uh, and of course, Joe Jones, who was the first great drum star with Count Basie's band. And each one of these guys brought their own personality to the drum set and to this new kind of bigger, beefier, more solid drum set that allowed drummers to really step up and show off what they could do. As we mentioned, Gene Krupa was really responsible for bringing the modern tom-tom into the drum set and really using it a lot as kind of a feature instrument and playing a lot on it. So I'm going to play a little Gene Krupa style tom-tom feature for you guys right now to kind of give you an idea of what, what that was all about. Who can tell me what made a drum set a drum set? The low boy. Kick pedal. Match grip. The sock symbol. My name is Daniel Glass. I'm a drummer, author, and educator. 
In 1994, I joined a band called Royal Crown Review. We were trying to figure out how to take the rebellious spirit of modern styles like punk and put it into big band and other roots music. We found out it was already there. I've been absorbed in this world ever since. I started researching the evolution of the drum set and the way that we play it. In the last dozen years, I've interviewed more than 60 different legendary drummers. I came to a startling conclusion. Perhaps more than any other instrument, the drum set is equipped to tell the story of America and American music. All of these immigrants coming from around the world brought their technology. music and pop music were one and the same. You could dance to it. 